Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for uh, uh, for joining the call. Um, I would like to make uh, four points uh, before we get into Q and A. Um, the first point is about financial overview. Um, so Q2 has been a milestone year for us with revenue crossing 1,000 crore for the first time. Um, so we delivered 19% revenue growth and 30% uh, fat growth and with 131 crore of free cash flow. Um, the second update I would like to give you around value cost. So value cost delivered very strong performance in Q2 and contributed at an incremental revenue of around 100 crore at a consolidated level. So value cost operating was operating at 7% EBITDA before our, uh, before our acquisition. Um, so value cost operated at, sorry. So value cost before acquisition, value cost operated at 20% EBITDA in the first quarter of consolidation due to improved cost of sourcing and synergy efficiencies. We expect this business to operate at around 16%. We expect to complete the value cost overseas acquisition in Q3, subject to regulatory approvals in local geographies. They would add around 60 to 70 crores on a quarterly basis to our top line. The overseas business operates at EBITDA profitability of low, lows on a single digit, and we don't have the same level of synergies in those geographies. It takes a bit of time to uh, uh, to drive the higher profitability. We expect to see the full impact of acquisition in Q4 of this financial year. And the third uh, update I would like to give you on organic growth. So we delivered 7% organic growth on revenues, Y over Y, and the flat on a sequential basis. We have tailwind of price increase for two months in domestic business which contributed around 35 crores, uh, 35, 35 crores growth sequentially. However, the demand was elastic and we saw a drop in the volumes of around 7% in domestic business. So, um, so let me give you an update on YZLA ATP, um, which I think uh, quite, quite a, we have a lot of uh, inquiries about uh, YZLA ATP. Uh, ever since we announced uh, results to the market. So Wisely ATP is the biggest innovation of Tanla, and um, Gartner has uh, recently come out with uh, um, the magic quadrant for the free pass industry. And uh, so they have recognized Tanla as a, as a preservationary in the, in the, in the, in the quadrant. And it, that, that, is a, that is a reflection on our innovation. So when it comes to monetization of Wisely ATP, we are in the final leg of commercial discussions, uh, commercial closures uh, with uh, leading banks in India. So if everything goes right, we should be able to go live uh, during Q3. Um, so as and when uh, we go live, definitely we'd like to update uh, all of you. So in terms of the Q3 outlook, uh, we expect this Q3 to be a growth quarter. Um, we see um, we clearly see two levers. The first is a domestic price increase. Enterprises optimized their spends, particularly on the promotional campaigns, which I expect to reverse in Q3. We, we will also get the full quarter benefit of price increase, as that was effective only for two months in Q2. The second level is typically Q3 is a strong quarter with a potential phase two spends, which will, be, which will drive our business growth. So in terms of the margins, we expect to be range bound at the, at, at, at the current levels. So with this, um, um, let's get up the Q&A and uh, we will have a very detailed discussion on, on business and financials. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. 
वी हैव अ फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ अमित चंद्रा फ्रॉम एच डी एफ सी सिक्योरिटीज प्लीज गो है अपॉर्चुनिटी so so uh, you know my first question is uh, on the organic revenue you mentioned that you know we had price increase and we have a volume drop of around 7% so uh, the volume drop is a function of the price increase and the lower promotional spend or is it uh, also a function of the consolidation that has happened in the industry where you know, two of the larger uh, you know players like uh, you know kalgaria and telefine has been acquired so is is the impact of that also that because those volumes have moved out ah uh, all right yes sir so i mean i know i i don't think there is any consolidation uh, effect because you know those are really not you know two businesses operating in india uh, what we think is largely it is driven from a price elasticity point of view right from a demand side point of course there was some ipl related spends in q1 right which would not have repeated in q2 but clearly you know the impact that we saw is that you know uh, customers did optimize their promotional spends in light of the price increase so i would say there was more direct correlation between the price increase and volume drop than any other factor so deepak you want to add anything here okay answer of uh, in terms of the price increases uh, you know how it has been taken by the enterprises so like is it uh, just a temporary you uh, know kind of a phase where they are just and you know uh, they are just like realigning to the new pricing structure and the spends as you said will come back so what is the confidence level uh, in terms of uh, you know you saying that the promotional spend or uh, the regular spend will come back in terms of volumes and also uh, you know If you can, uh, you know, uh, I just said that the margin impact in this quarter uh, on the organic front was offset by higher, uh, you know, uh, margins on the value first. So, uh, like, you know, on the on the organic front, you know, despite price hike, are we seeing margin compression in the organic side of the business? Uh, so, uh, so Yeah. So Deepak will address the first question, which is largely in terms of the how the customers have reacted to price increase and how sustainable we believe it is. So Deepak, maybe you can start off, and I will take the second question. Yeah. So uh, in terms of pro- uh, promotional spend, I mean, you know, so uh, see, whenever there is a price increase, uh, obviously, you know, it is not being taken very uh, uh, nicely, right? So uh, customer takes some time to digest that. and then there are uh, some budgetary approvals also what they need uh, you know so it that takes time so it is it happens uh, every time i mean there's nothing new in that and what we feel is that uh, you know uh, promotional spend will be bang uh, will be back with a bang in q3 so we know the festive season has started and it will be uh, back uh, right it is already uh, you know started to coming back uh, you know as i would say so yeah so this is what it is yeah so so uh, amit on your second question right you know the price increase is not margin dilutive from a percentage standpoint right so there are multiple levers on profitability that keep moving up and down but price increase if anything would be accretive right on a steady state to margin percentage so, so that's really not how it has played out this time okay and uh, so uh, the impact that will have so you mentioned uh, about the loss of contract uh, the vi uh, the contract loss that we have so that impact will mostly come in quarter 3 and quarter 4 so uh, you know will it because it it is uh, impacting the higher margin kind of a business so can we see uh, at the console level uh, you know the margins uh, sustainable at at 80 90% or uh, we can see some and the margin pressure uh, you know coming in the you know coming quarter and also uh, you know if you can comment on the you know atp they so mentioned that uh, you know it's like uh, going on and uh, you know the pocs are still going on but uh, you know any status of tie ups uh, with other telcos because we have wisely atp tie up with one telco so are we targeting other telcos also in terms of tie up 
So, so uh, I mean, today here, in terms of a um, um, uh, question, uh, 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 question on the VAR deal, okay, um, I think we, we, we may not see any impact in, 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 in Q3. Uh, that's, that, that's what my, 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 my belief. That's number one. Uh, number two is meanwhile we are concentrating on other businesses where it is expected to compensate uh, the loss of opportunity with VAL. So, uh, so net net we don't see any margin pressure going forward. That's number one, right? Number two, in terms of wisely um, ATP, um, yeah, uh, not that POC has been ever ending. We have completed the POC for three months for the four large banks in India. Uh, they, 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 we, the, the platform has demonstrated. A phenomenal results. Um, uh, um, it is almost um, brought down the complaints by 90 percent, um, uh, including with HDFC and other banks. So, but but uh, uh, as I told, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this product needs a bit of approvals from the various regulators. Um, that's where it's going very very slow. Now now the now we have clarified a lot of uh, uh, points with the, with the various regulators, mainly with the RBI and the PRI and DOT. Uh, now and our business teams are engaged fully with the banks to close the commercials. Um, I am allowed to say we kind of close the commercials with one of the largest banks in India, but we just uh, about to close an agreement. So as and when we close one agreement, uh, uh, that agreement we should have to go live. And um, then it becomes easier for us to close the other, other, other uh, um, uh, with other enterprises. Okay. Okay, Uday, and uh, uh, thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Balaji from IIFL. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon. Congrats on a uh, strong quarter. Uh, so I have two questions. So first is. Uh, uh, what is the uh, status of the uh, uh, deal that you signed with uh, the largest uh, e-commerce player which you announced uh, during last quarter's result? Uh, number two would be, uh, uh, can you just uh, remind uh, me on uh, how the uh, NLD uh, uh, SMS pricing stacks up with respect to other channels, especially after this price increase? Thank you. Deepak, you want to take the, both the questions, please? Yeah, 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 yeah sure. Uh, so, uh, uh, Balaji, uh, the customer, the international customer which we uh, mentioned last quarter, uh, the onboarding is uh, complete and we already started seeing, uh, uh, you know, uh, some revenues and some traffic flowing into our platforms, but it is not completely fully ramped up as of now as it takes time. Uh, but uh, we feel that uh, in Q3, the uh, ramp up would be uh, completed and we'll have the full capacity uh, coming onto us by the time we exit uh, Q3. So it has already started. I mean, it's already, uh, customer is onboarded and uh, the business has already started. Uh, so in, in uh, you know, in, in Q3. Uh, so, so that is one. And, and what was the another question? The other one was on the... Uh... You know, after being an NLD price hike, how does the NLD price uh, stack up uh, with respect to other channels like, say, a WhatsApp or an RCS or even email for that matter? See, uh, the uh, NLD price is still cheaper than uh, other channels like RCS and WhatsApp, uh, right, uh, even after the price increase. Uh, but yeah, RCS and WhatsApp has their own features, their own advantages. So if, uh, so it all depends. Now it is uh, more like, you know, providing a complete mix of the channels to the customer and the customer would decide which one to pick up because uh, uh, WhatsApp and RCS and even TrueColor, you know, they, they provide, uh, you know, rich media, they, they provide conversational facilities, uh, you know, and, and long messages. Uh, so, their customer has a choice to move to those channels as well. Okay. Uh, just a quick clarification, follow-up on the first uh, question on the largest e-commerce player. When you said that the ramp-up would be completed during 3Q, in the last quarter you had said that your endeavor is to handle about uh, two-thirds of uh, their traffic on your uh, uh, network. So, uh, by, three, by, uh, during the, by the end of 3Q, will we be somewhere close to that? Yes, absolutely. 
this is what we are uh, striving for yeah okay thanks great and all the best thank you thank you we have a next question from the line of deepak chokani from trade capital please go ahead uh thank you for this opportunity i uh, just have one question others have been answered uh, sir how many new platforms are we currently working on and will there be any platform which will be commercialized apart from atp in this fiscal year uh <clears throat> so so deepak it's a good question but um um is too early to comment uh, as you know in fact you did visit our innovation experience center hyderabad Uh, that center is uh, basically established to um, uh, come out with a lot of uh, new platforms, um, um, but but uh, definitely we'll inform the market as and when that when we are when we're ready with a, a new platform. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Amit Agarwal from Levi Investments. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, sir. You are able. Please go ahead. Uh, my question is regarding uh, WhatsApp segment. So we have 15% market share in WhatsApp segment, and the reason that we have such a low market share in the uh, particular segment, plus uh, WhatsApp itself is coming out with a lot of business solutions. So, uh, do we take it as our competitor or our enabler? Uh, should I answer this? Hello. Yeah, yes. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, Uh, just to uh, I mean I don't know if you missed that uh, Caris Mobile has been uh, uh, awarded as the uh, you know growth partner of the year in this year by Meta uh, in the recently uh, held event uh, there was a very huge Meta event happened in Bombay and uh, we've been uh, awarded as growth partner of the year and uh, that is one uh, number two with value force coming in our uh, market share uh, you know combined market share is much higher now. uh number 3 we have been growing very very fast the reason why we are our market share is lesser is the reason is that uh, uh this is the historical reasons to that and uh, wherein uh, you know uh, you know there's another competitor of ours who had bought a couple of years of head start against us who are the only uh, exclusive partner for meta for a couple of years so obviously we started late but we are catching up uh, so we are doing uh, we're doing really very well we have been acquiring a lot of customers we have been building a lot of use cases we are building a lot of user journeys and uh, and you would see that you know and our uh, whatsapp business is growing very fast and not only whatsapp if just to tell you it is not about whatsapp it is about overall ott as a play right so whatsapp is just is is, is one of the channels in that so we are doing we are doing very well on rcs as well we already have a exclusive partnership with truecaller we are building a lot of use cases there as well and uh, so if you see we are the we are we have the largest ott network today uh, uh, you know in the country to offer to our customers and you would see that uh, you know we, we would be winning a lot of business on that so uh, what is the uh, expectation in next 2 uh, to 2 to 3 years uh, what will be our market share in this particular segment i mean if you i mean we we are we are already uh, you know uh, striving for uh, to 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 gain more and more market share right so it's 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 tough to comment but yeah we would be we would be you know increasing our our share uh, very rapidly and my last question is regarding about uh, upi transactions so what market share you have in upi transaction how many upi transaction come to us see we uh, you know we are present uh at at, at you are aware right we have present a lot of bfsi i mean a lot of banks and okay. and the bfsi segment you know uh, 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 so from where this transaction are getting originated we are present getting about 70 to 80% of those customers right so naturally you know uh, if the upi transactions go uh, uh, go up uh, you know our uh, share also goes up and our business also goes up you know so so this is this is how it works so you, you are aware right you know we are we are represented at about 7 to 8 uh, of the top 10 banks let's say uh, you okay. know so and all these banks are uh, are getting upi transactions as well okay thank you that's my uh, only question thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen to ask a question please press star and one on your phone now 
we'll take our next question from the line of Mohit Motwani from Novama. <coughs> Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations for a good set of numbers. Uh, my first question is with respect to the greater than 50 crore client bucket. Uh, previous quarter we had 19 clients in that bucket and there were some two clients for value first. Now from total of 21, this has come down to 17. So just wanted to understand is it, is this a, there's a customer loss or a loss in wallet share or is this because of lower spends by the enterprises that it has moved to other bucket? Sure. So, you know, one point there that you should look at, right, when we are given, we, we also have, and I have kind of addressed the top 20 customer movement also in the same way. Uh, value first itself was a large customer of uh, Canva. So, in a way, when you consolidate, it becomes an intercompany transact customer. So, it no longer is a customer, there, right? So, that is one of the reasons why you see even our top 20 contribution revenues coming down drastically. Okay. So, uh, that is one. Two is that, uh, you know, this is on a quarterly average basis. Uh, uh, <clears throat> and uh, the, the one point which we should note is they had certain amount of, uh, you know, IPL related spends, seasonal spends in Q1, right? And I am confident, therefore, when you again see the seasonal spends come in Q3, you will see this number go up, right? From uh, there is no customer we have really lost. Somebody moves from you know 13 crores in a quarter to 12.2 crores in a quarter, which is what has happened for a couple of our customers. That is really what is causing the same. Because if you look at from a greater than crore customer, right, uh, you've seen a very very significant movement. If you've seen a 10 to 50 crore, you've seen a significant movement. So maybe you know we can't look at only one bucket. Uh, but there is no real big loss in terms of customers. Some of them have slipped down from you know. Kind of 13 to 100 to 12 to 100, and that's really contributing to this shift. Sure, sure. And just for a clarification, so what was the volume degrowth for the quarter? I mean, there was an IND price increase, in fact, which came from the last quarter. On a year-on-year -year basis, there would have been some benefit from IND price increase plus the NND price increase as well. So what was the total volume degrowth uh, for the quarter, if any? So, so we are not really calling out volumes across the segment. It does not make sense. What we have said is on a sequential basis, our domestic business volume growth declined by 7%. And uh, that's really all we are selling with respect to volume. Okay, sure. Thank you so much for the answers. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Anil Sarin from Centrum Wealth. Please go ahead. Hi, um, uh, Uday, Deepak, Arvind, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate you on coming out with such a detailed presentation. Then there is a press release and then there is a letter to shareholders. So what that has done is it has made uh, our job easier. So much of information. I don't think too many other companies provide this. So uh, that's a job well done. Um, my question is regarding, uh, during the AGM, you had mentioned today that uh, there is this, uh, uh, you are also pursuing ATP opportunity in Saudi Arabia. So if you could provide some, uh, you know, uh, update on that, that is one. Second question is, uh, assuming all these things go through, what is the revenue impact? And I, I'm not asking for a particular revenue, but I, I just want to reference the TAM, which is given uh, in one of your, I, I think it's, it's there in the presentation. So as I look at the TAM numbers, current TAM going forward in future, etc., the uh, the security part is pretty slim over there. So is it true that uh, you know that the the ATP would not be a, a substantial contributor to revenue as we go forward? So these are the two questions I had. So, um, hi, <coughs> sorry, Anil uh, Uday here. <coughs> so, when it comes to Saudi, yes, uh, uh, we have been constantly in touch with uh, mobile carriers out there. In fact, I personally visited uh, along with my business team a couple of times to Riyadh. Um, so, the problem with the with the both the Saudi and uh, and mainly in India right now is in both the countries, TP is approved. The, the data protection bill is approved. Um, the same thing happened in in Saudi also. Probably one month here at there, then both the countries approved the data bill at the same same time, and that is really pushing. Uh, um, that is really 
um, slowing down of WhatsApp, uh, sorry, uh, uh, wisely ATP deployment. What it means to say is, um, so the, this wisely ATP has to be integrated tightly with uh, mobile carriers, mobile operators, and the respective geographies. And um, then people are thinking from, people are looking from the lens of uh, data privacy and data security issues like that. Okay, that is really slowing down. Otherwise, uh, the impact that it is delivering to all the enterprise, mainly to the banks, is is is, uh, is 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 astonishing, right? So that's number one. Number two, when it comes to um, the revenue potential of wisely ATP, I, I what I would like to make a couple of statements here. One is it's a more of SaaS product, meaning to say that um, once we deploy with the telcos and 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 uh, once we start uh, charging to enterprises like. So we want to charge for per user and per month. So it's more of a SaaS product. It's more of a subscription product like. Okay. So uh, when it comes to TAM, what we mentioned as part of the presentation, one of our presentation is with the one we're talking about is what we want to keep it with us. We don't, we don't, because mm -hmm. whenever we receive the money, we have to share with the other uh, ecosystem players, mainly with uh, 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 mobile carriers and other uh, uh, players like WhatsApp and it could be even Google also. So we are still working on it live. So what what the time that we mentioned is what we want to keep it, potentially keep it with us. So we're not we're not really capturing the total time uh, of the uh, of this uh, product. Okay. Okay. Thank Thank you. Did I answer uh, your question? Yes. Yes. Uh, that's been very useful. Uh, one follow up yeah. question is uh, you you mentioned that the Vodafone impact about that. Uh, that, that firewall impact is going to be felt in the fourth quarter. Uh, so, uh, meanwhile, the uh, the ATP obviously would be up and running by that time, uh, you know, uh, all going well, as well as the NLD increase and the value first, all of those would be there. So, net-net, how much of a setback would the exit of Vodafone, um, that firewall business, uh, have on the fourth quarter numbers? Anil, uh, um, it's difficult to answer, but uh, our intent is to make it on uh, nearly zero, okay? And uh, we have a lot of levers on our side. One, as you rightly said, uh, the price increase in, in India, domestic price increase in India, that's number one. Number two is uh, we are doing a lot of stuff on the, as, as explained by Deepak, uh, we are doing a lot of uh, solutions on, on uh, uh, OTT players, mainly on the two called WhatsApp and RCS. So uh, they are on five. And uh, so we're not too worried about uh, what we lost, but we are worried about how to implement new solutions on, on the channels that we have. So very pretty come go about the new channels that we have. In fact, uh, we have ourselves have, have, have terminated or uh, uh, agreed agreed not to extend uh, the uh, agreement with the uh, VAL because it needs a huge potential, a huge financial commitment. Uh, and so as I explained last day, last time, uh, our strength lies with innovation, not uh, not to offer financial commitment to any operators uh, 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 in, in any country, including India. So, uh, as you to answer your question, like we are not too worried about it. Uh, our, our intent is to make it uh, nearly zero, zero impact. Okay, uh, with with your permission, I just had one broader question, and not to do with quarters, but uh, can I ask now? Yeah, please, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Uday, if you go back in your own history, uh, you know, uh, many years ago, you had operations in I don't know how many countries, at least 20 countries. So, international is nothing new for Tanla. Why is it that you are still confined to India when you have a history of operating in multiple countries uh, in the past? See, uh, good question, Ani. Um, we did operate uh, when we were very small, when we were very young in, in, in most of the markets. Um, um, absolutely, I completely agree to agree with you. Um, but uh, we have slightly changed our our, um, our strategy. One is we see India is the biggest opportunity for all of us, uh, mainly for Tamil, because we, we understand the local market very well. We I understand the local terrain very well. Um, and also, uh, the way we would like to see ourselves is wherever we, we operate, we would like to be the market leader. We don't want to spread into 20, 30 countries, and where we would like to generate around 50, 400 cores in each geography, which, which we're not good at life. So, we, wherever we enter, we would like to 
uh, may, uh, make ourselves as the market leader in that geography before we move to the other geography. So, so we are not in a great hurry to move to 20 countries and impress the market. No, we are not in a All right. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, wish you all the best for the coming quarters and years. Thanks. Thanks, sir. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Tejas Shah from Laser Securities. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, I heard part of the why discussion. Uh, uh, why did we lose that customer? Another thing is we are losing, are we losing a lot of customers who root mobile for any pricing pressure or any services issue? Can you repeat your question again? It was not clear. Uh, I have clarification on why Vodafone, uh, basically, why did we lose that customer? And uh, why are we losing more customers to root mobile? Is it only purely on the pricing power or are we losing something on the features? Uh, Deepak here. Uh, yeah, you're there, please. Not Deepak, please go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, uh, you asked a specific question, so uh, a specific answer, no, we have not lost any customer to the uh, to the said company. And, uh, you know, as far as our uh, technical capabilities and our features are concerned, we are, uh, we are far, far superior. Okay, and um, please, uh, let me also add, uh, sorry, Paige, let me add one more important point here, um, uh, in addition to what uh, Deepak has mentioned, right? I encourage you to read uh, the, the Gartner uh, quarter, uh, uh, the uh, report, which they released a month ago. In fact, we are planning to send to all our shareholders from, from next Tuesday, let's say, onwards. Look at where we are in relation to our competitors globally, okay? We, are, we have recognized, they have recognized, uh, Gartner has recognized Stanley as one of the most innovative partners globally, right? So that speaks the volumes about our innovation. That, that speaks volumes about our platform's uh, capabilities, right? So uh, uh, I hope I answered your question, Paige. Yeah, but then uh, uh, how quickly we'll be able to grow our EBITDA or margins because our products are superior, services are superior, but then are we facing any pricing pressure from anywhere? Deepak? Pricing pressures are there. Okay, and uh, I would say, uh, you know, India is such a market that where uh, uh, customers are very, very sensitive about uh, pricing. Okay, they want the best of the world. They want best of the solutions. At the same time, they would still look around and ask for the, you know, who can give us the best price, right? Uh, so, uh, so this is what it is. But uh, if you really ask me, you know, we have been, uh, you know, innovating. Uh, not just in terms of platforms, we are innovating in terms of our solutions, we are innovating in terms of overall offerings. So what we are doing right now is we are going to the customer, we are saying, hey, how we can uh, bring your overall spend down and how we can give you better ROI, how we can give you, a, uh, you know, uh, how we can uh, add value to your business, uh, provided, you, you know, if today my share is 50% or maybe 45%, uh, would you give me your 80%, 90% share if I bring your overall cost down, right? And uh, so this is what our, uh, you know, uh, our, uh, you know, pitch is. And that is helping with, as I mentioned, with our overall, uh, you know, uh, you know, offerings. You know, we have our, uh, as I said, largest OTT network today, you know, which helps, you know, so now we can, uh, we can uh, differentiate, you know, let's say, it's not necessary that for every uh, uh, transact or for every communication you have to send an SMS. You can send an SMS, maybe you can send a RCS or a true caller or WhatsApp where you see a better engagement, where you see better ROI. Okay, so we, we can provide, uh, you know, we are providing that kind of platform today to our customers and uh, we are seeing, uh, you know, uh, good penetration on that and, and good acceptance on that. So, so this is how we are, uh, we are uh, changing the game here. Thanks a lot. Thanks. That's from my Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Amit Mishra, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. 
Yes, yes, I'm good. But yeah, I, I have two questions. Um, um, so, first one is, um, uh, what's the progress on core uh, partnership? Uh, did we sign up the, the, the first client, and uh, if not, what's the timeline? So, so Amit, uh, you know, we have uh, we have a uh, partnership with Core uh, for the last uh, one a little more than one year. But what we released is Corely, uh, Core. Core, uh, the platform is mainly meant for uh, large and mainly meant for uh, European and American customers rather than Asian customers, um, because the flows are different, the regulations are different, the compliance are different. So that's what we noticed after working closely with uh, large banks in India. So what we decided to do is uh, not to Work, work with only core. We decided to work with even other uh, similar platforms. Uh, so the board and the senior management have taken that conscious decision uh, last month uh, to, uh, to not necessarily to work with only core, but also to work with other similar platforms where they can uh, they can uh, they can help us win more business in India. So 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 we don't need really really worry about the core uh, on, on that front. I mean. So is, as a follow up, uh, so uh, is it like uh, shelved for now, and we will see when the better opportunities arises, like in countries like Indonesia or uh, you know elsewhere? Yes, yes, yeah. no, still, yes, still, like you know, as and when we see a uh, synergies uh, where we think we can take core to uh, the large deals, uh, 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 core is open. We are quite, we are open, uh, but but uh, but meanwhile we would like to work with even other similar platforms because we don't want to lose the business. And the, the second question is related to the you know, water phone contract, uh, which we lost on platform business side. And uh, I understand, yes, uh, that it was be it was due to complete in November. They probably got a better deal um, elsewhere, like cheaper cheaper price. But what are we doing to protect our uh, platform side of business? Because Wisely, being you know the uh, the, the head line, uh, product for Tanla, um, we, we should be better, you know, like in protecting our uh, business or clients because wisely provides uh, you know X Y Z. So I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, so like you know, as as I mentioned earlier, like you know. So uh, the the we have we have decided not to extend the uh, ATM agreement with VAL. That's number one. Number two, what you need to understand is in fact once you deploy the platform with any uh, enterprise or uh, mainly with the uh, telcos or any other uh, service providers, um, we uh, this is the first time that we lost. Uh, we, I mean, we kind of uh, decided not to extend our agreement. Um, these are reasons best known to all of us. Uh, the situation that we are right now is in. So, so we don't want to take any financial risk. Uh, that's how we have decided to not to extend uh, 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 with many with the with, with the with the particular telco, right? So uh, we are not pulled out just because the product is not functioning. In fact, product is performing so well, uh, but uh, yes. they need some financial com commitment. Uh, situation that they are in now, right now. But we have decided to not to uh, get into that relationship anymore. So, as a follow up, this is, is this. Because Vodafone finances are not in good shape, and they they are probably negotiating on on all of their deals with so, all the vendors. No, Amit, uh, and we we didn't decide no, Amit, to uh, proceed uh, because Amit, uh, uh, yeah. Amit, sorry, uh, uh, it is not fair and not far to behalf of uh, comment on behalf of my uh, our partners. We have a very very strong relationship with Vodafone the last probably one and a half decade. Uh, we still the, the largest partner for VA. Um, so I don't want to really discuss certain things which I'm not authorized to discuss. So I would like to leave it there. I agree. Fair enough. Uh, just one last question, if I can squeeze in, please. Uh, yeah, please, Microsoft, please, please, please. Yeah, so we had this co sell arrangement uh, for Wisely with Microsoft. Is there any progress on that? Or are we utilizing or having some uh, attraction there? Uh, that partnership seems to be. Uh, we haven't received any update. Uh, yes, I, I, I agree with you, Amit. Like, yes, of course, uh, that's a long-term agreement with uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with, with uh, Microsoft. Uh, 
but uh, the, the technology has moved on in the last, uh, at least mainly in the last one and a half year. A lot of technology changes in the cloud space and the, and the mainly on the stack and ANML. Uh, so we are closely watching this area, and uh, and uh, because it's uh, mainly because of the DPDPT bill was uh, was tabled and approved uh, in the parliament a uh, couple of months ago. So you know uh, now the the, the 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 regulations have changed. The technology has moved on. The enterprise uh, the, the demand is 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 gone to the next level. So so we are closely looking at uh, the situation like so that's the reason where where we're not able to give an update. Right. So, and this is all. Uh, thank you, and uh, Congress, you know, on the on the good side of numbers. Thank you. you. Oh, hopefully, we will get thank you, Mr. more growth in Q3. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We have a next question from the line of Swapnil Portuke from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Hey, hi, everybody. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, just uh, I wanted to ch check with you on the Vodafone India deal. Uh, uh, from what I understand, uh, the impact will be on the international traffic uh, uh, that we have mentioned in our press release as well. Uh, now, could you help us understand, uh, 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 does that mean that any traffic, uh, ILD traffic from, uh, that flows through Vodafone, uh, that that will no longer flow through Tanla henceforth, uh, or, or is it something else? Basically, I'm just trying to understand the uh, the impact on a from a layman's perspective. Okay, what were what were we uh, uh, getting earlier, and what we will not be getting henceforth? Thank you. So, Swapnil, uh, it's a good question. Uh, a is it does not have any 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 impact on our ILD business. Zero impact on our ILD business, right? Uh, suppose assuming that uh, uh, the deeper and the and and uh, and, and uh, the business development team is within the international deals, and and uh, so they don't really care whether we, we our our platforms are deployed in the any particular telco or not. Okay, they continue to uh, win the uh, uh, deals with the, with the large tech gens globally, and it does not have any does not have any 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 impact on 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 whatsoever. That's number one, right? Number two, like yes, but the minute we pulled out our platform. Uh, um, it doesn't mean either. I, either I can I can submit to the uh, uh, the new platform, or I can submit the same traffic to other telcos who will bring to the VA through interconnects. So 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 nobody has any control on 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 in, 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 on, on any traffic. So it, it it has got a zero impact. Thank you. Okay, got it. So, does that answer your question? Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, it could. Uh, I mean, uh, if you could just go uh, a little bit more simpler, uh, because uh, see, uh, the, the the issue over here is like, uh, uh, it obviously uh, we don't understand and understand the techni uh, technicality so well uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know how the deal was. So, yeah, so, so, so Sapnil, uh, currently we are managing their firewall. Okay, uh, so once uh, our deployment is over, we will not be managing that firewall. Uh, what does it mean is the firewall, what firewall does is it, uh, you know, it detects which are the uh, international messages or which are the uh, domestic messages. And it blocks the domestic messages and it allows only international messages to pass through. Uh, so that there is no revenue leakage for the uh, telecom operator, right? Uh, so, so this is what, uh, you know, our firewall, uh, you know, is doing currently. And for that, we, uh, you know, we have a revenue share, uh, you know, arrangement with the telecom operator. And which we already stated that, you know, what would be the financial, uh, you know, uh, you know, impact, uh, once the deal is, uh, you know, uh, you know, is over. But as far as our ILD business is concerned, uh, let's say ILD business here, uh, is done by uh, Carrick's Mobile or now even Value First, uh, you know. So uh, and similarly, a lot of other companies. Uh, so we 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 are uh, unaffected by that. Okay. So we would uh, still continue to connect with all the operators and uh, continue to enjoy the same uh, similar pricing. And so there would be no uh, impact either on pricing or on uh, or on uh, you know services. Got it. Very very clear. Uh, thanks a lot for that explanation. Yes. 